널 기다렸어. Gumiho wins here. If Gumiho wins, well, he advances, okay? If then... Gumiho loses, I think it's a tiebreaker if SOS wins against Trust, yeah. regardless of what happens to Gumiho. Yeah. Gumiho just needs to win now to get out of the group. If he loses, he's out. So there you go. This is Gumiho's last game. Everything's on the line for this guy. And, oh boy, he's gone up against Harkin, who you know, he just got some confidence from beating Trust. All right. Gumio had a rocky start in this group, but when he beat Curious in set 18, that was when it was like, okay, there's the hope is alive. And when he beat Trust in set 20, that's when it was like, okay, he beat Trust. Trust is 5-0. Trust yeah. made a mistake. That was his first loss. But now it's like, it's do or die time. He has to win this game. And you know what? Even after that last game, I still favor Gumio coming into this one. I feel like Trust made some massive mistakes in his build order. Just in the way he played that game, Gumio, he's been here before. He's no stranger to the pressure of coming up against someone much better than Hurricane, to be honest. So coming up against Hurricane here, he's got to be feeling good about his chances. It's going to be on Frost. It's going to be a longer game. Let's jump into it right now. Game number 28. Here we are on Frost once again, and in the bottom right, in the red, the guy who is killing dreams left and right, it is Hurricane, cannot advance from the group, but insists on winning on camera. Gumiho, gas first again. Up to the top left, one win away from advancing himself. And this is gonna be cross map again. Is Gumiho actually um, five and four? He is, right? Yeah. I have five. five I have five and three on my sheet for some reason. So that was like throwing me off. Five and four. It. He's only got this one game left. Yeah, it's his so final game. Got to play game. a total of ten. Not everybody will because of the two uh, eliminated matches: mm -hmm. Hurricane Classic and Curious. Only have to play nine games. All right. We see the Gate Nexus Core build coming out for Hurricane, playing it safe. Yeah, gonna go for a scout here, big map. And he is going to eventually find out that it is cross spawns out on this map. So, as Gumio, what kind of build are you doing here? He's, he's going for the standard, what he's been doing in every game against Protoss, which is the gas first. He's not gonna add that second gas, it's a big map. He's gonna put down a CC here, so I, the Reaper expand into factory. To be totally honest with you, especially because this is Frost and the, the spawns are bad for this as well, but that's like not something Gumiho could have known. I think this is the worst map to do the build he's doing. It's the longest rush distance by air, the longest distance he's going to have to pressure with. It's going to give Hurricane a lot of freedom to take a third base. Yeah, but Gumiho's been just ignoring maps. He's done this kind yeah, of like build in every, every single game. game against Protoss. There's, you know, a couple of times he mixed it up, right? The Seijung build where he did double, you know, Liberators, yeah. for example. Yeah, and he obviously mixes it up as it gets further along in the build, as it gets to two, three bases. But the, the opener has been the same. So, I don't know. I, I think this is the worst map for the build. But it looks like he just can't he can't do anything else today. Like, he's he's set in his ways. This is his last it's, game, he's, he's already made his choice. He's probably practiced 50 to 100 games of this this kind of style. Because when you're going in a group against four Protosses, you need to practice your TVP. And if it makes him comfortable to practice with just one build, obviously there are downsides to that, but maybe that's what makes Gumio comfortable, and that's what we've been seeing. He's going for a second barracks. This time he's going to have quicker stim. Let's see if he grabs a Cyclone off of this tech lab. I would imagine so. That's been how he's been playing. There it is. You can grab the Cyclone. What would be really cool is, obviously the Cyclone's going to be great in a lot of situations. Good safety, you can pressure with it a little bit, you can scout with it a little bit afterwards. If he goes into just one Cyclone that switches and goes for stem, that would make me really happy. Oh, with the second barracks coming up, or I guess third in total, I think that is probably what we're going to see. Really committing this, wants to get the kill with the Reaper. I like this a lot. Hurricane going to lose the Stalker. Wow. Hurricane being punished for going out on the map with the Stalker. And usually you don't see this happen. Two, two uh, Marines and a Reaper able to kill a Stalker out on the map. And now he's even got the follow-up of this Cyclone. He is doing the switch I was talking about. This is a much better variation of all the builds he's done today. I think this is like by far the best version you can do, especially for this map. Yeah. So 
a lot of what we've seen from him is two Cyclones into stimless marine pressure. But this time he's going to have stim early. And if he wants to put pressure on cross spawns on frost, he's going to need that stim to do it. And he's going to need a lot of marines. And he's going to have to hit the timing like very crisply. And I think he has to leave the Cyclone at home because obviously there's an Oracle on the way. He doesn't know that. But Warp Prism drops. Uh, Oracle Harass, that's the kind of thing he's going to be worried about, sending his whole army cross spawns across the map because it's going to take a long time to come home. There is no going home, in fact, versus that. Well, this Cyclone is across the map already, and he's looking for units here at the front. Mothership Core. Yeah, he's I'd trying to maybe be grab watching an Oracle. the Cyclone here at the front of the base. Oh, there he is. He's trying to get that Mothership Core. Does he commit? No, he doesn't, and he loses it. This is the second time that Gumio has done this and oh, left boy. it with 10 hit points. This is the second time today. And that's actually, it's like, he was going to lose a Cyclone either way. Definitely a mistake. It would make, it would strengthen his push massively. Now he doesn't have a Cyclone for defense. And he doesn't have the Cyclone, uh, or rather, and he doesn't have the Mothership Core down for the attack. Like, he, he, he gained nothing and lost a lot with that move there. Yeah, that's for sure. Ooh, it's... Bay coming up. Oh, boy. Colossus time. This has been the bane of Gumio's existence in some of these matches. Pretty, pretty early Colossus, too. He, he wants to start them very early on. I think he's only got three gates. He's got three gates. Good positioning here. Crowd going wild about that. It's like, oh, you got Marines in the main! Like, but the issue is that he doesn't have any Marines pressuring. And Hurricane has three bases and Glaives and five gateways and Colossi. So what you really should not be clapping about is the fact that there's Marines in the base. <laughs> You should be <laughs> sighing, biting your fingernails, and getting stressed out if you're a Gumiho fan especially. Well, maybe they're Hurricane fans, man. If you're a Hurricane <laughs> fan, you should have gone home a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Look at this. Small troop of Marines, it looks like, to hit the third base. and He's going to hit it from the high ground. Yeah, this is like the most roundabout. You would never expect this, really, just to send out a bunch of Marines on foot. This takes so long on a map like Frost. But, I mean, back at the base, there's already a pylon finishing up. He sees it. He has high ground vision. The pylon's going to be killed instantly. He's going to actually go for probes. In fact, leaving the pylon there, the Colossus is rallied over to this location. This is the bigger issue. The Colossus is not out yet. He needs to use overcharges. He only has one pylon in position. This could do a lot of damage. It's going to go ahead and target it. Even using that time warp to try to buy time. This is why this Colossus is greedy. Oh, look at this. All these probes have to run away. The, the gateways, Marines. The gateways should be done. They're just now warped. Oh, there nice we go. In. He's going to block oh, the Marines. Oh, the oh cancel. no. The cancel. This is a big problem. This could snowball out of control very quickly. Okay, he's able to get those two adepts out, and that does save this. But the Colossus is scouted, and right. he's already done a ton of damage. Hurricane needs to get his probes back into the mining position. Those uh, Marines could have been doing double-pronged harass over here. At the same time, they were not. They're going to come back now. Uh, looks like he's saying one medevac. Is a weird pathing here for Gumio is how he's saying his medevac. It's like saying the opposite direction, I think, is the way they should go. But finding a little bit more damage here. Oh, uh, not targeting the probes, but either uh, way, just a small bit of harassment. I think it's time to get that Void Ray out, you know. Uh, Could be nice. Oh, uh, just out of range of the fast warp in uh, location here. You just got to get out with this medevac. It's not doing anything, man. <laughs> He's still trying to find damage. And in fact, as I say that caster curse, he gets a bunch more kills. Looks like maybe one more probe. But well, either way. Two Marines on this medevac. Nothing scary. This one over here cleaned up. Gumio is bleeding units. I don't think this is a good idea. He has he has to find damage, but like doing moves like this, committing where it's worth it, is the better choice than just tossing units into the fire. Because his third base was so late. It is up now. He's mining with just a few SCVs. And with SCV count even, with the probe count, the mules are going to give him extra value. It's the tech that's the issue. And for the first time in this group, he's going to commit to double Vikings to deal with the Colossi. The very first time any Terran hey, has done this in a while. The last time he got four Liberators with range, and that was not enough. And he started the Viking production a little bit too late, and he actually lost that game. I forget who that was against, but maybe Classic. This is cool. This is doing damage. Yeah. Trading the dev for two SCVs, not bad. Uh, Gloss are out right now. There's two. The third one's almost out. All right, don't forget four with a mine drop coming in. This is not that expensive for Gumiho, but it could get massive returns. 
You can wipe out a mineral line with this many Widow Mines. You can actually drop it on the high ground even. And it's going to be very hard to detect. The pylon was replaced, which is really important. And Hurricane's totally fine to go into this late game. He has the Colossae out here. Is he going to make a switch into anything? Is he going to... Try to get out Tempest, try to get out Storm. Well, the He's second a, Robo yeah. Yeah, tells me no. Okay, scans, there's no Observer here and no reaction whatsoever. Oh my god, 12 probes going down. And he's not done there, there's more. Whoa. Not yep. sure where the other Widow Mines are. There, there they, they are. are. In the main, cannon too late. Should be dodged, the first one. Grabs oh boy. one, he zero kill. see this one. And he can target this one for maximum damage. There you go, 19 probes in total. It looks like Gumiho is going around 16. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hurricane, I mean, he's had some trouble with his multitasking and with detecting stuff like this. He gets another huge hit! Two huge hits, nearly kills the Mothership Core, and this Widowmine is still alive! It's still alive! This one's still alive, too. He needs to get his ass over to that third base and clean that one up, or another hit's going to go off. I'm actually going to look at it over there. It's still up. Yeah. We're getting close. I, I think our observer is going to miss it, but you'll you'll be on top of it. I trust you. Okay, it looks like observer. Oh my is god! In. Oh my god! Uh, gets oh, another seven hit. more kills. Oh man! You guys didn't get to see it, but Valdez is on it. You should just be an observer and a caster. <laughs> you should observe while you You're can. Give it a shot, see how it goes. All right. Yeah, well, this right. should just be the end of the game. Well, he doesn't have that many Colo or Vikings, but it doesn't seem to matter. Look at this ground army for the Protoss outside of the Colossi. He doesn't even need the Vikings to kill the Colossi. <laughs> In fact, they just sit there and do nothing. Yeah. Trying to be Morrow here. Looks like uh, he's actually having some trouble. Wow. Well, this is what happens when you don't target your Vikings at all. He's going to survive. <laughs> uh, what? Okay. But... Gumio just kind of 1A-ing in there, not controlling his units, and just thinking he's way too far ahead, but it doesn't work out. It still matters almost little because of how large Gumiho's army is. This move out here is pretty risky. Look at this, I'm like, yeah, okay, let's do a stim and split kind of, sort of, <laughs> and he destroys your army. If those, if those Vikings were targeted onto the Colossi instead of just flying... Uh, you Above know, being like the party stalkers. balls, yeah. It's like a party ball who can pop at Pinata Vikings. <laughs> Clown Fiesta, right? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's what that attack was. We got disruptors on the way, as well as sentries. Um, this is like the most micro-intensive army of all time. You force field in the units and then you blow them up. He should be making Archons with all the gas he has, in okay, my there opinion. there we go, yeah. But he doesn't have the Temple is, Archive yet. Yeah, this is what we predicted about two minutes ago, but... Finally coming down here. And... Gumio has taken this fourth base, evened up the bases now. And even though he kind of had a sloppy fight there, he is still very far ahead, as you pointed out. This isn't really gonna work. Nope. So a few units lost there. Uh oh, coming in. This angle here, this base is exposed. Gumio is being again, which has been his weakness in this group. I feel is too timid. He's double the army supply, and he has a large enough army that if microed correctly, can kill the Colossi. And the weird thing is, he's usually timid in that he scans over and over to kill the observers first before he goes for drops. But this time, the observer lives. And he goes for the drop, and it didn't see it. I don't think Hurricane even knows about this. He catches this drop, which is nice. Okay, he sees this one, and all he has to do is come over. He scans the wrong place. He's like, oh, I guess he didn't see it, but no, he did. Oh, the yeah. pylon saw it, obviously. Yeah. Um, there's disruptors in this army, and this is kind of weird because this is the old meta, in a way. Well, I'd say, like, the oldest meta where people are using disruptors instead of Templar, even. This is like no storms and Templar, I mean, uh, disruptors and Colossi. So Gumi is probably like, okay, how do I deal with this again? Let's be really careful. Yeah. I it's all about splitting and control. I'm kind of worried for Gumio too, because Storm is on the way now. Gumio's just sticking on this. He doesn't have any Vikings, but he's getting plus two air weapons. It's like, I don't know. This oh, is going to be really is, nice, This though. is a bad fight for, uh, for Hurricane. Look at this surround. That Nova got a lot of damage, though, but yeah. still, this is just so much bio pushing in. Hurricane's two, two. doing a really nice job protecting those Colossi, though. 2-2 two, two did finish for Hurricane. 
Uh, Gumio is only plus one armor, a huge warp in here of Adepts. Storm isn't done, and he has no more Novas to fire out here. No disruptors. Good micro on these Colossi, but I think this might be the beginning of the end. Storm isn't ready. Gumio doesn't know that. So Hurricane's going to try oh to zone boy. him out here, and no way. He just locks away. He doesn't all know. All those units are so, so low, and yeah, he sees all of his Templar with Storm. He's like, oh boy. Or, or rather, the energy, I should say. He doesn't know that the Storm was not ready. This is so tense right now. Now he gives time for all the Storms to complete with the eight Templar that he had. Well, he had eight. Now I think he's just got four. He morphed some into Archons. And he's still got Colossi. A lot of them survived. Disruptor's still out on the map. And Hurricane's army is very fierce, very strong. This is not going to be easy for Gumio to win from here. No. Remember, guys, Gumio has to win because even if he ties five and five, he will not have the away wins required to win the tiebreaker. Or, you know, in the head-to-head. -head. Yeah. So he has to win this game. Despite the fact that he will still be tied 5-5. Five five. He doesn't have enough away wins. This isn't a away win, but it's irrelevant. If he wins this, he will advance. Yeah. Because he'll have six wins. And then Trust versus Hurricane will be the last deciding match. Okay. Or Trust versus SOS. Sorry, that's what I meant to say, yeah. Coming in here, Pylon not ready. This could actually do a bit of damage. Yeah. Force a big pull. Gumio has an army to the left side, and he's taken a fifth base. Well, he's repositioned his um, CC from his natural. He actually has very few CCs, so he doesn't have that many mules, as much as a normal Terran who's been expanding regularly would have. He has plus three attack, something that Hurricane's missing. He does not have the armor, so things are kind of equalized in that sense. The most important thing is that Hurricane has all these observers finding vision. He's trying to bait Gumio into a fight here, because he's got his army coming up. A successful bait. And, oh, the force field, though. Yeah. Not not good enough to scan. He's like, can I turn on this? Gumio is too smart to, you know, just go straight in there, just one a his entire army. He's gonna set up the concave once again. This is just too much AOE to play against. You need to be so careful every single time you go up against this Protoss army. And he's coming right now from two angles. This game would have been over five minutes ago if this was Maru. He's gonna go for the Maru attack though. He's up. 70 army supply. He should be able to win this. He kills a disruptor before the Nova goes off. And that is going to be game here. Kumio will advance to the round of 16. There you go. The full surround. That's all you could have asked for. The perfect fight from Kumio. And how fitting for him to move on to the next round after a fight like that. There's some storms left over. Not even going to throw them out. It does not matter at this point. There you go. That should be it. GG! Gumio moves on! And we have our second qualifier in Gumiho. Classic in Gumiho, the two to move on. But we have not finished our group just yet. We have our last game, Trust versus SOS, to finish the night, potentially. Now, if SOS wins, it'll be tied 5-5 five to five and three away wins apiece. If Trust wins, the group ends, it Trust advances. Those are the two scenarios we could have. And that's all that's left to be said. We're not going to take a break. Now, I no don't know. Here. I don't know what the tiebreaker, how it's decided, what map we play on. I think, I actually, in my opinion, here's how I'd do it if I was the ref. I think you play two games. Both players choose a map again. So you have a home map and an away map. And if it's a tie, then you start over again. Other otherwise, well, it's not really fair. You can't just have one random true. map and one best of one. So basically, it's like a spelling, but you have to win twice to advance. That's 